almost all of you know about three weeks ago on Monday night, my mother was taken to Fairfax Hospital by helicopter from a local hospital where she was initially admitted. Upon receiving a phone call from my younger brother, Angela and I, we rushed down to Northern Virginia. As I stepped into that dark, cold, little room in ICU unit, I gazed at my father and my mother. She bears the marks of wisdom and suffering in every wrinkles she has on her face as she tried to make a life here in America as a new immigrant. She worked tirelessly and very hard in order to support us and often holding two full-time jobs day and night at the same time. She served God's church as a pastor's wife for 40 years. During the time which both my dad and mom established four new churches. And with humbleness, but with pride, I must say, all these four churches are the Presbyterian churches. She was truly a loving person whose life was dedicated to care and support of God's church and her people. My mom also was an indispensable companion to my father until the deaths took them apart. Along the healing and comforting flood of emails, cards, and texts was one carrying a wonderful quote from, I think, Hemingway, which says, the world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. My own heavy and sorrowful heart is mending as I was burdened by the feeling of regret. Gosh, if I had just one more day, I would say, I love you, mom. I love you, mom, as many times as I could. I wish I had just a little more time to listen to her stories, but this time fully 100% engaged. These days, I develop a strange habit of waking up in the middle of the night and strolling through the pictures of my mom. As I recall memories of her, I cry and smile in silence. I pray that God's eternal love embrace her in peace as she enters into eternal home to be with God and of course to be with my dad. In and through it all, one thing I learned is that love not only begets love, it transmits strength in times of difficulties. You know, when a person is passed, there are many things can be said. And there is at least one thing that should not be said, and that is, maybe it is the will of God. Do you really think it was the will of God that my best friend in college and also my college roommate, Kapju, on that night that he couldn't find a room in a hotel and that he was pushed to drive another hour and a half on the dark highway in Montana. He was too tired to stay awake and at the blink of an eye crashed into a truck coming from the opposite direction. Do you think it was the will of God 
that the Jacob Blake stood in the middle of argument and got shot from behind seven times while having his children to witness this horrendous incident. Do you honestly think it was the will of God that a college student who didn't fix up his large windshield wipers and that he was driving in a, such a heavy storm? And do you think it is the will of God that there are no street light along that stretch of road and no guard rail separating the road where he was finally last seen. For some reason, nothing so infuriates me at the incapacity of seemingly intelligent people to get it through their head that the God doesn't go around this world with his fingers on the triggers his feast around the knives, his hands on the string wheels. God is dead set against all unnatural and tragic death. And Christ spent an inordinate amount of time delivering people from paralysis, insanity, leprosy, and muteness which is not to say that there are no nature caused the death. Death can be untimely and slow and pain-ridden, which for that reason raised unanswerable questions. The one thing that should not be said when someone dies is, it is the will of God. Why? Why? Because never do we know, not even a devoted theologian, with a PhD degree in theology and biblical studies, know enough to say that. My own consolation lies in the knowing that it was not the will of God, that my mom had a massive stroke, that when the waves of her consciousness faded away over the horizon of time, slowly moving, and God's heart was the first of all our hearts to break. You know, these days I'm thinking and praying a lot, especially those of you who recently went through what I'm going through now. I'm thinking of Bonnie as she mourns for niece and cousin's death. I'm thinking and praying for Mary Freiburg for her dear brother's death, thinking of Diane Kunzler for her loving stepfathers when she say goodbye. I'm thinking about Elizabeth and her family for dear Catherine's departure. I'm also thinking and praying about Cliff Stibex for grieving for the absence of Betsy Perlin, a longtime companion. And I'm thinking of Carol Gorlam, who finally had to say goodbye to Henley after the long years of taking care of him. And I'm thinking and praying for Kathy and Jeff Milston as they had to be a parade of farewell to their loving parents. And I'm also thinking of Carol, Carol Watson Musiolo for sending off her beloved extended family members. I'm thinking about Doug Henshin, who had to say goodbye to his brother-in-law as he faithfully stood by to support his sister throughout his battle with cancer. I'm thinking about Mary Lou and Missy, who still misses very much and keep the loving memory of their mother, Paul. I'm thinking and praying about Judy Baines, who traveled to her mother's many times in that long distance in Pennsylvania until she was finally passed after celebrating nearly 100 years of earthly life. 
I may have skipped some name, but please, I ask of your kind understanding. Friends, if we are not perfectly united in Christ's love, we find unity in the common experience of death and sorrow in one or another way. If we dare to be more honest, you and I are united in our sins, intentionally, unintentionally, we commit during our earthly life. I mentioned earlier the, the healing flood of letters and cards and emails and text messages. Some of the very comforting, but easily the worst came from fellow pastors. A few of them prove that they know their Bibles better than the painful reality of human condition. I know all of the right biblical passages too, including the blessed are those who mourn. And my faith is no house of cards. These passages are true, and I know them in my heart. But the point is this. While the words of the Bible are so true, the grief renders them unreal and often deeper than one can ever fathom. The reality of grief is the absence of God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The reality of grief is the solitude of pain the feeling that your heart is in pieces, your mind is in blank, and that there is not a joy the world can give, like that it takes away. That's why immediately after search, hearing upon sad news and tragic news, people must come to your rescue people who only want to hold your hand. Not to quote anybody or even say anything. People who simply bring food and flowers. The basics of the beauty and life. People who sign cards simply, your broken-hearted sister. I've heard some of my fellow pastors, not many, and none of our congregation members, thank God, were using the comforting words of scriptures for self-protection. To pretty up the situations whose bleakness they simply couldn't face. But you know, like our God, the Holy Scripture is not around for anybody's protection. The Holy Sacred Scripture is for everyone's unending loving support at times of difficulties. And that's what many of you understood, I think, so beautifully. In your thoughtful messages, you gave me what God gives all of us minimum protection, but maximum support. After the death of his wife, C.S. Lewis wrote, they say the coward dies many times, so does the believed, beloved. Didn't the eagle find a fresh liver to tear up the skin? and eat it in Prometheus every time when it flies over the tip of the mountain and dined. I'm learning that when parents die, as did my father about 15 years ago and my mom this past Wednesday, they take with them a large portion of the past. But you know what? Even more challenging is when children die, as I have intimately experienced. 
being with our brother Don Tripp when he had to say goodbye to Edward Tripp. They take away the future as well. That is what makes the valley of the shadow of death seem so incredibly dark and unending. But in no human circumstances, when we encounter the deaths of a loved one, we experience deep pain. Because in life, we love our mother so dearly. In death, we love her still. In our hearts, our mothers hold a place no one else will ever be able to replace. But still there is much by a way of consolation because there are no rankling unanswered questions. And because Gloria's son, my mom, and I been together, living together for during the last three years and shared many good times and challenging times together. There is no doubt that the emptiness she left behind in my heart will be large and deep. But I know in my heart that it will be clean. I know how lucky I am because of my mom. I know that my mom would not wish to be held closely by grief and sorrow, but rather embraced by joyous hope in the glorious resurrection in Jesus Christ. And I also found another consolation that comes from Robert Browning Hamilton's poet, poem, the titles along the road. I walked a mile with pleasure, she chattered all the way but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, and never a word said she. But oh, the things I learned from her when sorrow walked with me. As the grief that once seemed unbearable begins to turn now to bearable, sorrow. The truth in the right Bible passages that beginning the once again to take hold. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall strengthen you. Psalm 55 verse 22. Weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 30 verse 5. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain to stand strong. Psalm 30, verse 7. For you have delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Psalm 116, verse 8. In this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of a good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, verse 5. And finally, I know that when my mom reaches the other side, my mom is welcomed by the Lord of eternal life, Jesus Christ. Alongside him, my father, my grandparents, along with a cloud of godly witnesses, all the saints, has received her warmly and welcomed. Well done, good and faithful servant. So I shall, and so let us all see consolation in that love, which never dies, 
and find peace in the dazzling grace that always is. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.